Now in this section we are going to introduce and encounter our first model of economics. And there are going to be a few other economic models that we will have to learn about in this A-level economics syllabus. And this word, an economic model, it sounds scary. It sounds as if things are going to get complicated. But remember, models in economics, they're supposed to make things easier for us and they're supposed to be our friends. So in economics, you see, a model is simply either a graph or a set of mathematical equations. And all it tries to do is that it tries to bring together a few related economic ideas and concepts, bring them together in one place and sort of stitch them together in a way that allows economists to create a bigger, larger picture that tells you or shows you some other useful, larger economic idea. And then more importantly, within the details of this picture, the economists can also make inferences about some other useful economic ideas. Now that is the purpose of an economic model. And our first model that we are going to learn about in this section, the production possibilities curve, as its name suggests, this PPC is a graphical model primarily because there are a few numbers that we will need to make sense of, but primarily it's a graphical model. And the ideas, the related economic concepts that this PPC brings together are the concepts of scarcity, choice and opportunity cost. And the picture that is created by stitching these ideas together looks simply like this, a two dimensional graph, a downward sloping line, which is known as a PPC. And on the face of it, the most visible economic idea that it shows us is that it tells us about the productive capacity of a country. This is the most visible function. It tells us about the productive capacity of a country. But within the details of this picture or this graph, we can also make inferences about economic ideas of unemployment, economic growth and perfect versus imperfect factor mobility. And it is these economic ideas and what the PPC tells us about all of these different things over here, that is exactly what we want to understand by the end of this video. But of course, we'll start off with the very basics. So let me first just go to the definition of PPC and from there I will build the entire analysis. And it's quite simple and you know quite interesting. You just need to remember before I start that this is all purely theoretical world that we are going to enter. So you, you are not going to sort of compare it with reality and you know sort of try to judge whether this is right or wrong. This is how it is. This is a theoretical world and that we are going to enter. So this theoretical world of production possibilities curve and this curve and this graph, this model, it claims that, look, I can show you the productive potential of a country, the productive capacity of a country. Now, productive capacity simply means the maximum amount of goods and services that a country can make, given its limited resources. So this claim of uh, this model of PPC, it sounds like a Herculean task, because you see, in any country, you would have thousands, if not millions of different products. So how can a simple graph, a simple uh, two-dimensional curve, how can it show you the maximum amounts of all these goods, the productive capacity of the country? Well, this is where the rule of assumptions come in to economics. And to make everything very, very simple, economists assume that, look, this country is only going to be able to produce just two goods. Any two goods, but just two goods. And then PPC says that, look, I am the curve that can show you the maximum possible combinations of these two goods that a country can produce given it uses all of its resources in the best most efficient way that is there is no wastage now this assumption uh, that a country can only produce two goods it really makes it very easy uh, to sort of show the productive capacity of a country on uh, this two-dimensional graph over here because now we can simply take one of these two goods on the y-axis and the other one on the x-axis and then any point within this graphical space will basically uh, show us a certain combination of good y and good x and that this country can produce. Now uh, the way we identify those points that reflect uh, the maximum possible combinations of these two goods and therefore uh, the way we sketch our PPC, I will explain that to you by constructing an imaginary example over here. 
where I will assume that there is a country where the only two goods it can produce are either cars or apples and we will also assume that the total amount of limited resources available to this country are equal to the size of the screen block over here. And what I'll do is that I'll first of all just use simple numbers to construct uh, certain different possible combinations of apples and cars so you, uh, you know, clearly understand what do we mean by maximum possible combinations. And once we have a few combinations, once we have a few possibilities, then we will put those numbers on the simple graph over here and we will end up with a production possibilities curve. Now, you see the simple idea behind this model of PPC is uh, that uh, the different combinations of cars and apples that a country can possibly make, it will depend uh, solely on the way they choose as a country to use these limited resources. If this country decides or chooses to use all of their limited resources to just make cars, then of course they will end up with a zero number of apples and some maximum amount of cars that they can possibly make since they are using all of their resources to make cars. Now the exact number we can assume any number so let's suppose they end up making 90 cars. The exact number is not important. The idea which is important is that this is the maximum amount of cars they can make and this combination of zero apples and 90 cars is one of the maximum possible combinations that this country can produce. Because you see this country can decide or choose to use these resources in a different way and let's assume that this country sort of thinks that look we also want to try and make some more apples. So if they want to make let's say 100 apples the whole idea that this model is trying to capture is that look you can't just make uh, more apples while making 90 cars as well your resources are limited in scenario A you have sort of used up all your resources to make 90 cars so if you want to make 100 apples you will have to reallocate some of the resources towards apples and take them out of the production of cars that is you will have to give up some cars if you want to make these 100 apples now again the exact number of cars that will be made when 100 apples are also made the exact number is not important what is important is that in this scenario B where you are also making 100 apples you will be able to make some amount of cars which is less than 90 less than the maximum you were able to make so let's assume you are only able to make 60 cars now you can just continue to build up this scenario and let's assume that this country really loves their apples so they decide they want to make 100 more apples for a total of 200 apples now again as compared to scenario B to make 100 more apples in this scenario let's call this scenario C this country will then have to allocate even more of its resources towards the production of apples that is even fewer resources will be left to make cars so let's say you end up with just 30 cars this time and similarly if you continue with this uh, example and let's assume that this country really falls in love with their apples and they decide to put all of their resources in apples and then they will be able to make let's say a maximum of 300 apples again the exact amount is not important but we are just uh, trying to you know capture the main idea all resources in apples so this is the maximum amount of apples this country can make and this country will of course be able to make a zero cars so what all these numbers over here give us are basically the production possibilities available to this imaginary country because each one of these different combinations over here is one of the many different maximum possible combinations of apples and cars the two goods that this imaginary country can produce and that is exactly what we mean by production possibilities and once we have these production possibilities we can very simply make a production possibilities curve by simply plotting all of these various possibilities on this graphical space over here where we can measure the number of cars on the y-axis the number of apples on the x-axis and then you know all you need is just very simple maths to plot these numbers over here and make a graph out of them 
Uh, let me very quickly show you how we can do that and then I will take you through how this model that we get uh, sort of captures uh, all these other economic ideas. So this possibility A first of all is uh, simply when we are saying this country produces zero apples and 90 cars. So if you start from the origin zero apples mean you are not going to move right on the x-axis whereas you are going to go up on the y-axis until you reach this number 90. So that is your production possibility A, zero apples. 90 cars possibility B 100 apples 60 cars so 100 apples 60 cars possibility C is 200 apples and 30 cars and possibility D is 300 apples and zero cars so once you have these production possibilities you can just combine them together for now through a simple straight line and what you get is your production possibilities curve a downward sloping graph a graph with a negative gradient that shows you the productive capacity of the country now how is it doing that where is the productive capacity well you see all of these points a b c and d and for that matter any other point on this graph uh, it's reflecting a certain maximum combination of uh, you know cars and apples that this country can make so point b is showing one such combination point c is showing another such maximum possible amount of apples and cars this country can make and as you move along from this point uh, of the ppc to this from end to end this ppc will actually encapsulate all the different maximum possible combinations of these two goods that can be made so this is where we say it's showing you the productive capacity it is showing you all the maximum amounts that can be produced and it is for this reason that these uh, ppcs are also sometimes known as production possibility frontiers it's frontier meaning it's the edge the end of uh, the production capacity of your country because you can't produce any combination that lies beyond or outside or above this production possibility curve such as point uh, you can call it point one and point two and to see why this is not possible you see let's just assume that some country starts operating at this point b where it is using its resources to make 100 apples and 60 cars this being a point on the ppc it means this is the maximum possible you can produce it means you have used all the resources you have exhausted all the resources to produce this combination now to get to this point one you see you need to move up that is you need to make more cars and you need to move right and that is you need to make more apples as well now can you do that can you get to this point of course not because here your resources have been exhausted they are limited you don't have more resources to produce more of both the goods so that is where we say that any point outside or above or beyond and this is what you need to remember it's desirable because that would reflect a combination of apples and cars that is much more than what your resources allow you so it is desirable but it is unattainable you cannot produce that much now what about a point inside or below or under a ppc such as in the shaded area under below a ppc now to think about it and let us again begin by assuming that the country is operating or starting from this point b using all its resources producing the maximum amount of 100 apples and 60 cars now if you ask this country whether it can reach this particular point inside the ppc now this point is where the country has to produce 100 apples and almost 30 cars can it do that well your productive capacity your ppc is telling you that if you produce 100 apples you can produce 60 cars so if you decide that no i want to do produce just 30 cars while i make 100 apples you can very well do that but why would you want to do that as a country because you see the whole problem of countries is scarcity they don't have enough goods so operating at a point like this inside a ppc means you are producing less cars in this case than you possibly can while you still can produce your hundred apples so any point therefore inside a ppc would always mean if you compare it with any other point on the production possibility curve that you know by producing the same number of uh, apples you can produce more cars than what this point is representing so any point inside or below a ppc remember 
it can be attained you can get to that point but you won't really want to be here as a country because you would be producing less than what your productive capacity what your PPC allows you to produce and this also means that since you are not producing as much as you possibly can and you are below or under your PPC it also means that you are not going to use all of your resources that is a point inside a PPC reflects that there is going to be unemployment of resources in the economy some land some labor some capital some enterprise will be unemployed and another way of saying all of this is that you know a point inside a PPC means that this country is maybe going through recession meaning that they are producing less than what they normally can And that brings us to the next idea, economic growth. How does this simple model tell us about and what does it tell us about economic growth? Well, you see, if a country is inside a PPC and we are saying it's a recession, it's producing less than what it possibly can, then uh, assume, and let's get rid of this second point over here. Let's assume this is the point inside at which the country is operating. It's in a recession. There is unemployment. Now, if this country sort of moves upwards towards this point and starts making more cars or maybe moves to the right and starts making more apples and gets to this point. That is, if it moves closer towards its PPC, if it moves closer towards its productive capacity and start making more goods, then more people will be employed, there will be more incomes and that is where we say that there will be economic growth. That is the simple innocent way in which this model tells us about economic growth. That if a country is starting at a point inside of a PPC and then it moves in any direction towards its PPC, that means that country is using more of its resources than before, there is more employment and there are more goods that are being produced. That is, it means there is economic growth in the economy. So these are the sort of, uh, therefore, the details that you need to know about this model of PPC. You need to go beyond the simple memorization of the definition and how the graph looks and perhaps how you can replicate it. And that is useless on its own. You need to know how in this theoretical model we can make inferences about all of these different economic ideas. And this is an important topic. But once you understand the purpose and then the reason of ways in which it you know, achieves its purpose of talking about all of these different variables, you will see most of the MCQs will sort of seem simple and repetitive because this is exactly what they're going to ask you again and again. Point inside, what does it mean? Recession, unemployment. And now you understand it, so hopefully you won't forget it. Anyhow, there are uh, still a few more things that we need to know about this model of PPC. We still need to know and understand how are these ideas of scarcity, choice and opportunity cost uh, captured by this model of production possibilities curve? Now those ideas are all related with each other so I will explain all of them in the next video and as we go along through that discussion we will also learn uh, the difference between perfect and imperfect factor mobility and uh, the reason why sometimes PPCs are drawn uh, like a curve instead of a straight downward sloping line. So all of those are related ideas and I'll explain all of them in, in the next video.